And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and I was pretty excited to get Santa Monica uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's from AEG, and almost everything they do these days is amazing. Secondly, the designer here, Josh Wood, uh, made another game from AEG a few years ago called Cat Lady, which I did not expect to enjoy. It looked okay at best, and in reality, it was a really fun little drafting game. This is another drafting game based on the Santa Monica Pier, probably the most famous pier in the world. I've been there. It's nice. Feels slightly overrated, I guess. I got there. I thought, that's nice. But, you know, that was about it. But if you love it and so on, whatever. This is a really beautiful box cover. Uh, the game itself is really pretty. But is it good? Let's find out. In this game, you're trying to get the most points, getting different feature cards. When one player has taken their 14th feature card, then the game will end. Feature cards are made up of two different types. You have beachfront property, and you can see here the beaches, and then stuff on the boardwalk here that's going to be on your street. And players are going to each start with a two-player tile, which essentially is one of each of these cards that you'll have that will start you out. It will also tell you what your starting resources are, VIPs and tourists and possibly sand dollars. So as the game goes by, you're going to be building up your area here. You do that by, on your turn, doing one of two things. Either you can draft any card in the front row and add it to your area, or you can use one of the special ability tiles that's next to the board. There's actually four of these tiles, both double-sided. You'll randomly pick two of them. So for example, this one says I can spend two sand dollars to take a card that has one of these symbols from anywhere and then move two of my people one card. Here I can pay four sand dollars, take a card in the front and the card behind it. When you take a card from the area, you take it from the front row, the bottom one comes down and it's replaced and you're going to place that into your tableau here in front of you. You put these next to the beach. You can, as long as there's an adjacent card, you can put it there. And sometimes this one, for example, gives you an immediate benefit of a sand dollar. And then also tells me end of game scoring. At the end of the game, I'll get a point for, that's what the sand castle stands for, a point for every two sand dollars I have. There's also a scoring area here. And this says, if I get two people into the scoring area at the end of the game, I will score three points. Now when you take a card that's in front of the food truck or the foodie here, they will move one and you also get a bonus. So if I took the one in front of the food truck, that simply gives me a sand dollar. If I take one in front of the foodie, I get to move somebody one space in my tableau. If both are together, I get to do both actions or I can take one of the actions twice, like take two sand dollars. And if they're both together and you do that, then the food truck moves two ahead so that they don't stick together the whole time. As you're building your tableau, cards are going to be giving you both tourists and local people. And you're going to be wanting to move them around to get them into these scoring spots. So there are different cards that let you move, or spending the sand dollar actions, or act, drafting a card in front of the foodie. When you get these people into these spots as they move around, then I, like I said, at the end of the game, you get two people there, you get three victory points. Here I can put some people in, I'll get three victory points. Uh, you also have your VIP. Each VIP is going to score points based on places they visit. This one, for example, gets points for visiting local and tourist spots that have that symbol on them. So when I move to a spot that has that symbol, I'll put a footprint token there to remind me to score that at the end of the game. This is going to give me one point. And if it moves over here, I'll put another footprint. So moving your VIP around can score you points in various ways. Other points you're going to want to score are based on a scoring card. There are three different scoring cards in the game. You'll pick one of them randomly, and at the end of the game, you'll get points based on what the card says. So two for each wave symbol in your longest group, uh, two for each card in your longest chain. That means cards that are all connected that have the same symbol. And whoever's the most unplaced people gets minus four victory points. So people who do not make it into one of these scoring circles. And that's pretty much it. So you'll place a card, take the bonus for it immediately. Then at the end of the game, you're going to score. Like this one here gets three points if it's next to a sports thing. 
It's not. It would have been better to put it here. I would have got three points. Some, this gives me a point for every sand hour, and this gives me two points. Uh, two, for every two sand hours, I get a point. This one gives me three points if I have three tour spots connected in a chain. And lo and behold, I do. So you're going to be scoring all these at the end of the game. It comes with a score pad showing you how to score, and whoever gets the most points is the winner. This deck of cards is really the charm of the game. The artwork here is fantastic, and it looks like a beach. you got weddings and lifeguards, and while they reuse a, a little bit of the same artwork, it has a really, every card is unique in some way. Here's actually the Santa Monica Pier itself, but this one's pretty cool because it has all these symbols, but you can't put any more cards to the left of this one. It has to be the end card. But as you build this and put together a tableau of these cards, uh, everyone that I played it with was really enchanted with the art of the game. And you know, the little dudes are nice too, because it's nice that not only are they different colors, they have symbols on them, you know, sunglasses for the locals, uh, the camera for the tourists, having the sand dollars be uh, a wooden piece is nice. Actually, my only problem with the game was people kept forgetting what each of these did. I almost wish there was a, a picture of a sand dollar on the truck just to remind you. That's very minor, though. The cardboard is really nice quality. There's a bird here to remind who first place token is, so everyone has the same number of terms. And the score pad is an easy way to keep track of everything in the game. Pretty good components. There's maybe too many or too few components for such a big box, but like I said, they're very pretty. Santa Monica is a very simple game in many respects. You're just drafting a card. You have four choices to pick from, maybe more once you build up your sand dollars. And I think in that regard, it works fine. It's a nice little game that doesn't offer a, a, t a lot of tough choices, but lets you build this fun tableau. The moving the people around is a pretty neat idea, and in fact, I didn't mention it in the overview, but at the very end when the game ends, everybody can move once more. Your locals can move three spaces, and the tourists and your VIP can move one space so that final get them to the, where they need to be. But that moving people around and then just trying to chain things together. I want to put together all these symbols of the same type. I want to put these cards on that score. I want to go for end game scoring. And in fact, there's the end game scoring bonuses. There's the how each card scores itself and then the movement of the people. And it feels like every game plays out very differently. It is a drafting game where you're building a tableau. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it because it's very pleasant to play, but also very pleasant to look at. And that's a good combo. I'm always happy to see something I haven't seen before. And the idea of building your own pier is a fun one. And it has almost this, uh, I don't know, like uh, not comic book art, but but close, like a, illustrations for a children's book art in a sense. And it's just neat. When you're done, even if you've lost, you sit there and you feel pretty satisfied. I don't think there's any really heavy decisions here, and I don't think this game's going to be played at tournaments and things, but it is going to be a game that I, a lot of people are going to play. I mean, I only had one copy at my last convention, and it was played quite a bit, and everyone who played it enjoyed it, and that includes myself. I had a lot of fun doing it. Each time I played, I tried different things. I'm going to take my VIP, and I'm going to run them all over the board and try to hit as many of those things as possible. I'm going to put a few scoring cards here next to each other, and the, I, I, the theme is not extremely strong, other than the art, but there are things like here's spots only tourists go to, here's spots only the locals go to. And you know, you joke about how your beach looks and everything. It's just a really good solid game. It might be a tad too big, the box, I think, maybe for the game inside, but this is definitely a nice mid-weight game that I think will be brought out at a lot of get-togethers, and if you have people who don't play games a lot, I think it's an easy one for them to understand and jump into. And it has a lot of similarities to other games, a lot of the same feeling like, oh, I'm drafting, I'm taking these cards. And yet, at the same time, offers a little bit of new things we haven't seen before, putting the cards together, chaining them, and then moving the people around on the cards. It's almost like you have a small, living, breathing world on top of these cards, which helps bring the theme out a little bit more, which helps make the game a little bit better. So, a lot of fun. Certainly want to check out when it comes out next month at Santa Monica. Dice Tower Judgment, approved! <laughs>